Cedia. Yeah. Was it cool this year? Was it amazing? It's always amazing. And I go there specifically to get a preview for the new HD TVs that are coming out. Usually the big hoo-ha that goes down at CES in Las Vegas comes up in January. This gives me like a three-month preview of what's coming up. That's why I go there. However, it is the Custom Install... Uh, Custom Electronic Design and Installation Association, which means that Cedia is a university environment as well, so that if you're a custom installer and you want to learn, say, the latest in, oh, I don't know, central vac systems and how to install those properly, or sound treatments for rooms and things like that, there are, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of courses you can take to actually uh, you know, educate yourself and get credit for it. And also Cedia is, representative, is a trade organization, and they represent their, their, their user base and their, their membership base from everything from legislation that's occurring in different states to, you know, help and how to for the users. Anyway, it's, it's a huge event. It happens uh, again this year in Denver, Colorado. And the trade show floor was packed with practically every major manufacturer in terms of audio, video, and accessories, and you name it. Uh, cables to oh, couches. A lot know. of stuff dealing <laughs> with AV. Now, let's get to the pictures. Now, we actually have a picture of a very odd object. I've never seen one <laughs> quite like this. If you um, could explain it a little bit. I don't have an actual hardcore what this is. Oh, it's a blue bear. It's a big blue bear. It's probably about three, four stories tall, and every year they put it right outside of the Colorado Convention Center. And you can and see people to the right of it, so you can kind of get a good sense of scale. It is It is a massive bear. I'm assuming that's the mascot of the whole thing. Anyway, that's the blue bear. <laughs> Well, if anyone has any information regarding the blue bear, what it means, what it represents, why it's there, please tell us. Totally. And I was over at the Ace Computer booth. This is one of uh, Microsoft's latest partners in terms of creating media center computers that incorporate cable card tuners. And this is an example of products they had laying out, showing off their goods. This is ATI's cable card tuner. Unfortunately, you can't actually buy this yourself. You actually have to have this integrated into a system bought from an authorized OEM. And the reasoning for that is just straight up DRM. Uh, in this case there's, there is the hardware right there. You could actually slip a cable card into that and you know, enjoy cool. that premium content right on your computer. Pretty cool stuff, I have to say. That was one thing. You know, uh, there is a lot of technology which I'm about to get into, but there's also the furniture side of things. And this is basically something called Cuddle Bag. And this company <laughs> creates, I guess, the, the modern version of the good old-fashioned beanbag chair that you're probably familiar with. Stuff with the uh, little pellets of uh, styrofoam. Anyway, these are filled with chunks of memory foam and wrapped in a microfiber, very plush uh, cloth material. They're available in sizes all the way up to 8 feet in diameter. I think that's the 8-foot one all the way in the back there with three people currently sitting on it. Let me say, the first day of the show, this was a fairly empty booth. This is the second day of the show, and it was always like this. People really enjoyed planting their keisters on the uh, cuddle bag. It looks really it's, comfortable. I'm, I'm tempted. They're, they're not cheap, but they not are cheap cozy. being... They, Oh, well, the bucks. biggest one I think is about six hundred fifty bucks or so. But check their website, cuddlebag.com. Uh, very cozy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not a Crestron ad. This is actually Directv's brand spanking new HR twenty one Pro. It's their new five hundred gigabyte satellite receiver. Five hundred. Five hundred. Five hundred nice. gigabytes. And by the way, if you have any of the latest HD satellite boxes, you can probably with the latest software. Uh, add hard drives to that as well. Uh, external hard drives and increase the storage. Anyway, that's, that's a topic for a different day. This baby is designed primarily for the custom installers out there. Uh, however, it will be available through standard channels to consumers as well. Coming in December, uh, the nice thing about this, like I mentioned, it's, it is rack mountable using the, uh, as you can see, some of the, the mounting hardware on the sides. And it will come with this sweet little Samsung box that I saw last year at CDA, but I haven't seen released to the public yet. This is actually an HDMI converter to fiber, uh, fiber optic. That little spool you see sitting in the back is about 300 feet long, and what it does is convert the fiber optic cable, or the, converts the HDMI cable as well as the infrared commands from the remote control into a fiber signal. It then travels along that cable up to 300 feet, so you could have this thing stashed, I don't know, on the other side of the house or whatever. It would bring that signal to you along with the remote commands and allow you then, with a similar box at the TV side, plug that right back in, convert it back to HDMI and into the TV, and boom, there you Perfect. are. Perfect. It mean, actually will come with that box, and that's going to be pretty yeah, good. if you want to run this through your home, you get your unit in one place and your TV in your viewing area in another. Great. Because it's, it's really easy to do you know, a 300-foot run of fiber, whereas doing a 300-foot run of something like HDMI with the ability to still control it remotely... Uh, you would attenuate the signal. ...gets problematic, probably more expensive as well. Moving right along. And this is the great HD VMD, or versatile multi... Oh, this is the new HD disk <laughs> format, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. To money uh, the waters even more. Versatile multi-layer disk, that's what it stands for. Anyway, this is a format that's scheduled to be released 
later this year. Along with three set-top players, the big deal here is that it is very inexpensive for the replicators to create these discs. Let me see if I have any other pictures here. Here's a close-up of the player itself. What they're using is standard red laser technology. Uh, like on a DVD player. Like regular DVD media, so that there is very little retooling for the current replication plants that are out there. The, the key for increasing the storage is to go crazy on the number of layers. Currently, they were demonstrating, I believe, three-layer disks. They have prototypes going all the way up to ten layers. And ten in, layers? In the lab, they say they were able to even do 30-layer disks, and that, that's just crazy. So anyway, there's how you're getting your storage. The players themselves will be arriving uh, Q4, and prices... Uh, the high end player is going to be 199 with i think the cheaper one goes for about 150 wow. they incorporate usb plugs for attaching your portable storage devices for support of things like xvid and divx and other formats like that as well i looked at a couple of movies uh, i think it was apocalypto and uh, we were soldiers uh, a couple of mel gibson style flicks image quality overall was pretty decent um, i have to say I'll, I'll be interested to see if this takes off they're claiming they're they're currently in talks with all of the major studios studios out there right now and it'll be interesting to see what movies actually sign on for this format it could be a very low cost distribution format you will you will likely not see things like a, a set top player or a, some kind of recorder that you could create this content with so if you could say have a 30 gig disc you know, that's a lot of storage, but it's for pressing. It's not necessarily for recording. Well, you know, in a way, that could Personal actually recording. benefit the studios because then you wouldn't have to worry so much about people trying to pirate and then re-outlay uh, the video onto another capacity. Although, I mean, you could use Blu-ray, uh, writable Blu-ray or writable HD it, DVD. It, it, it supposedly is coming. We'll see how well that takes off and, you know, what kind of momentum it is. I'm a little hesitant to add yet another disc player to my current setup, but, you know, that's just me. Anyway, back to the photos. HQV, the Hollywood Quality Graphics, this is a division of Silicon Imi- or Silicon Silicon Optics, excuse me. They were showing off a new projector, and actually, the projector that I'm looking at or was looking at is right down here in the corner. It's this little uh, bar right here. It's fairly close to the wall, and it's off-centered. So, if you were just projecting it normally, you get this distorted image, and we're here. We're showing a Wii up on the wall. However, using their latest and greatest, what they call eWarp VX geometry processing. Ta-da! Ooh. You're able to t- leave the projector right where it is and then correct the image digitally so you get you know, accurate image reproduction. I thought that was pretty neat. They also had some really cool demos in terms of upscaling DVD technologies and correcting noise of different kinds in terms of uh, and any noise technology so you didn't even have to think about it. And it will help, hopefully help make your, uh, your low-quality video look better on HD displays. Anyway, what do we got here? This was a prototype. It's kind of a dark picture, but this is a prototype 4K DILA projector from JVC. This was in a theater setup, and this was actually running, showing actual 4K material. What's 4K? Uh, your uh, 4K represents 4,000 pixels in the horizontal, mm-hmm. about 2,000 pixels vertically, so 8 megapixel resolution. Compared with 1080p HD right now? That's about 2 megapixels, so this is four times the wow. resolution of current HD material. That's out there, and I have to say, they actually showed a a clip from a movie called Trident, starring David Carradine, and that was actually shot. David Carradine? Yeah, it was actually shot in four megapixels or four uh, K, and it was displayed in four K. Would you want to see David Carradine in that high quality? It was amazingly detailed. They also showed an actual eight megapixel uh, flight simulator software running, and I, I have to say, a commercial flight simulator running, and that looked amazing as well. Amazing. It was just simply amazing. Uh, we'll see. It's also being. Uh, it's also coming down to some of their commercial pro- or their consumer projectors as well. Cool. What do we got here? Ta-da! LGs finally up and coming here or up and going with their second generation of their combo disc player. This is their BH two hundred. So the second in their series of Blu Ray HD DVD. Yep. And this one actually now supports uh, officially supports HD DVD, which the previous unit didn't. They've also removed those buttons from the top of the unit, so you don't have to stack it on the very top like the previous unit. This one can now be stacked normally. Nine ninety nine. Also, they shaved three hundred bucks off the price. It's now an official HD DVD player, and it'll play the Blu Ray movies as well. Full support. I can't wait to get this in. Samsung was also showing off their five thousand series uh, Blu Ray combo disc player as well. That'll be coming by the end of the year. Uh, just basically, you don't have to think about the format anymore in terms of your HD content. And on this one, this was quickly just a new demo from Microsoft. They were showing off their, uh, I want to say it's the extenders for Windows Media Center. Now, the Xbox 360 is already an extender for Windows Media Center. What these low power devices will do, and they're coming from network manufacturers like D Link and Linksys, and uh, I forget who else off the top of my head, but anyway, 
you'll have a little set-top box that will be able to connect to your home network. And over Ethernet or uh, dual-linked and wireless technology, you'll be able to stream up to five simultaneous 1080p video streams wow. with 5.1 audio, six if you count the PC it's being streamed from already. Uh, this is actually, I took a picture straight off of a plasma display that was receiving the streaming project or the content. Neat thing about it was, say you were starting to watch the video content in your, at your PC and mm-hmm. you hit pause, you can go into your living room with one of these devices and it had a resume button and you could pick it up right where you left off pretty cool. We're going to see more of this content at Digital Life in New York. They're actually going to have some other demonstra- er, announcements, too, regarding their internet TV service. Pretty neat stuff. This is also a pretty horrible picture I took, but it's Pioneer's brand new Kuro display, the Kuro series. This is their premium 50-inch Elite television, which will retail for about $7,000. Uh, this is their ultra, ultra premium. It incorporates new video processing, superior black levels. This is their, quote-unquote, SED killer that they were talking about at CES back in January. Uh, coming very soon, and uh, I'm hoping this will also be at Digital Life in New York as well. Cool. Woo-hoo. And then uh, I, I don't know. That, I mean, we ha- we have. That there's a lot, a lot of displays, <laughs> a lot of really cool stuff. There's a forty thousand dollar 1080p <laughs> flat panel, and uh, oh, some projectors that projectors were just single. amazing. And what else? And I mean, hey, just there's a there's lot a new of stuff from Sharp. Uh, maybe we can pick it up uh, next week. We'll maybe. we'll go over. Maybe. Unfortunately, we're running uh, low on time for this. <laughs> there was <laughs> but, a lot. A it lot. was a lot. CD is great, and uh, you recommend you know if people get a chance to head out there, you actually think it's better than CES for seeing a lot of the first home first run uh, home theater technology. And you know what? We have a lot of the coverage on the PC Mag website as well, including uh, lots of slideshows that you can take a look at some of these photos. Most of these photos are up there anyway. So if you want more details, slide over to the CDA coverage page on PCMag.com. 